Hi guys, my name is Madison and I am, this is my video debate uh, post. I am joining debate number two, which is diplomacy is an effective tool for solving the world's problems. I think it's letter A. Um, I have a lot of notes here, so I'll try not to wander and jump around too much. But um, to start off, oh my goodness. So diplomacy is one of the most important tools that we have as a developed nation. And I think that diplomacy should be engaged wherever possible, especially in a world that's changing as fast as ours is. Um, in a world that's as connected as our world is, we have open ties of communication, open lines of chat, 24-7, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Um, everybody's constantly talking to each other, talking at each other. And I think that it's the moral high ground of the United States uh, for us if we consider ourselves um, a first world nation, if you will, if we consider ourselves to be developed and better than other places, we should be able to uh, talk our way and negotiate our way and think our way out of problems. If you think of all of the world's problems, the top ones that come to mind are uh, numerous and wide spanning. We have education disparities, the global climate change, wherever you are in that debate. Um, food production and security is a question that we're coming up on in the modern world, um, ocean conservation, international trade, nuclear weapons, just to name a few. So there's a lot of things that we have to deal with as um, a developed society. And again, the way that we connect with the rest of the world. And I think that diplomacy is the number one way in which we should do that. Uh, you're not really going to blow your way through or blow your way to all of those answers. Um, I think one of the most effective talking points when um, considering diplomacy is the Iran nuclear deal. So um, that, of course, is one that's become pretty popular as of late with President Trump trying to um, end that agreement. Uh, again, wherever you stand on that debate, that's a different topic, but um, it's my belief that Diplomacy is the most important thing there, and whether we keep this same deal or not, or whether we negotiate again in the future, I think we should definitely try to um, negotiate and engage where we can to protect our neighbors and ourselves to make sure that um, nuclear arms around the world, because we're not the only ones that have them, so keeping ourselves safe, keeping everyone else safe is super important. So a little bit of background for the Iran nuclear deal, because again, I think this is one of the most important pieces when we're talking about diplomacy. And I also think it's one of the biggest questions right now, going into um, a time where it's no longer a guarantee. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I think that... So... To start at the beginning, there was the 24, not at the beginning, but to start further back, there was the 2015 Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, also called the JCPOA, which we still hear thrown around today. It was uh, comprised of China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom, and Germany. And so, long story short, to make it easier, this agreement worked to um, cut Iranian centrifuges uh, a great deal so that their capability for making nuclear weapons was slowed down quite a bit. Um, some people estimated that they were weeks away from having uh, full nuclear capabilities. And something else that I didn't realize in researching for this is that um, there's the ballistic missile and then there's the nuclear bomb and they're actually separate entities. I thought it was one thing, but Apparently, you can have the nuclear power without the intercontinental ballistic missile capabilities, which is actually where North Korea is a little, um, is a question today. So when you get both of those is when you actually have full nuclear capabilities and you're actually a problem. <laughs> so for Iran, we tried to keep them from getting the... Um, we made this agreement to slash their centrifuge and their work workplaces basically because they were trying to slow down their um, production of that second component so that they couldn't bomb us, so that they couldn't reach us. Um, and so the Iran nuclear deal was something that was bridged by the Obama administration. It was a landmark deal that 
wasn't supposed to be a forever solution. It was just supposed to um, get us by until we could find a different answer to the problem that was coming about with the nuclear arms. And the Obama administration sat down and they bought us time. They gave us the ability for the UN and the different agencies to be able to be on the ground in Iran and really be able to see what weapons they really did have and see where they were and their capabilities. And at the end of that Iran nuclear deal, whether we renegotiated or let it expire, the idea was that through diplomacy, through this deal, that we would have a better understanding of where Iran was and what their capabilities were and what their long-term plans were and what it actually looked like on the ground. So we were going to use that diplomacy to get us in the door to um, have a leg up down the road. And with us having pulled out of this deal now, I, if we don't renegotiate sometime in the future, we're just, we're kind of dead in the water. So this is a big place where diplomacy is... Uh, our number one friend. So um, oh, there's lots of places where diplomacy has proven itself to be the best idea. And some of those examples are the non-proliferation treaty. So this was the non-proliferation non treaty of nuclear weapons, also called the NPT. It was a big international effort. Uh, the emphasis came from U.S. foreign policy. It was a treaty initially negotiated um, around 1965, 68. And there were a number of countries that signed it in the later decades to help keep the world from basically blowing up in nuclear war because so many people were getting these weapons. And it was kind of just a hotbed for anything could happen. So we came together and created this treaty so that we uh, could get closer as a group, as a world, to uh, nuclear disarmament so that everyone was safer, everyone was better off because we agreed to work together. Um, opening China is another good example of diplomacy. So in President Nixon in 1972, his decision to end the long U.S. ostracism of China was, quote, equally a major event in modern diplomacy and a smart, geo smart geostrategic move. Geostrategic move, I'm sorry. <laughs> So it laid the groundwork for future relations with China and pressured the Soviet Union to help the U.S. exit the Civil War. That's according to Politico. So now we're in a trade war with China, which is a completely different subject. But um, the idea is that Nixon in 1972 understood that we would need to make friends with China for our long-term benefit. Also, the reunification of Germany. Um, the Bush administration was instrumental in the relatively smooth process of reunifying Germany in 1990 as the Soviet Union was collapsing. Um, so now you look at Germany today and they've flourished for the most part and they're um, an economic powerhouse, if you will, because we worked together to reunify them. Uh, when they were in a bad situation. So again, another example of where talking it out, working it out, coming up with ideas together for the betterment of all rather than going in guns a-blazing um, works in our benefit. And then, of course, Reagan and the Tear Down This Wall speech in Berlin, um, all good examples. The Daytona, Dayton Accords, I'm sorry, thinking of NASCAR, the Daytona <laughs> The Dayton Accords in 1995, so that was the peace agreement that we've been studying that ended the three-and-a-half-long Bosnian War. Um, and that was, again, uh, diplomacy, Warren Christopher, Secretary of State Richard Holbrook, and General Wesley Clark. So lots of people who had to really think big to uh, look more long-term. And But this also isn't to say that um, military intervention is never a good idea. It's just to emphasize that diplomacy diplomacy should always be our first line of defense, if you will. We should always try and come to the table before we uh, have to start blowing the table up. <laughs> so when I think of good, well not good, but um, areas in the world where situations where military intervention outweighed diplomatic 
strategy would be the Cuban Missile Crisis, right? So during the Cold War, intelligence told Robert, or I'm sorry, President Kennedy, that the Soviet Union was sending weapons to Cuba, preparing for a strike against the U.S. So then Kennedy is, of course, forced to choose, do I want to talk this out? Do I want to try and meet? Or do I need to act now? Is this something of right now importance to keep my country safe? for our country safe. And so, um, of course, speaking to Soviet Union President Nikita Khrushchev, uh, they decided to take a route that was more militaristic. So from that, they decided to enact a blockade around Cuba and threaten further action if the Soviet ships carrying the missiles threatened attempted to break through. So in order to prevent escalation by the U.S. president, they agreed to remove their missiles from Cuba. Um, and then, of course, Kennedy agreed not to invade Cuba and remove U.S. missiles from Turkey. So that was an example of where um, a bit of strong arm was necessary. It was an immediate need. So this was significant because afterwards, still, again, diplomacy is always a good idea. Afterwards, the two governments negotiated a solution that ended the conflict. Uh, the that ended the conflict, the blockade, and de-escalated the larger tension at each other's borders. So um, a good example of they needed some military force, but uh, definitely tried diplomacy afterwards. Because, again, you always want to have, in my opinion, those open channels of communication. You always want to be able to change your mind, talk it out. It's um, more flies with honey than with vinegar, I think is the saying. So I think that diplomacy is always a good idea, again, especially in times that are changing as fast as ours are, in a world that's developing as fast as ours is. The United States isn't number one anymore. The rest of the world is catching up as much as we'd like to think that we're number one. Um, it's nice to have friends and it's nice to, it's a good idea to stay, um, to keep those open lines of communication. So that's why I am all for debate number two, letter A. Uh, diplomacy is definitely a good idea. We should definitely engage where we can. And I think the world is a better place for it. Our allies are a better place for it. And our communities are safer for it. I look forward to hearing from all you guys. Thanks for listening to me rant. And um, good luck with the rest of your class.